Hello and welcome to the Reload Podcast. My name is Josh and I am your host for today. So today we have Jamie Franklin. Lovely to meet you. Thank you very much for coming down. Thanks for having me. So Jamie Franklin is the Artist Relations Manager for Roland. Yes, Roland Europe, yeah. Brilliant, uh, Roland Europe, That's sorry, right, yeah. That's um, right. a mistake. <laughs> um, and so uh, just to give a brief outline as to what Roland is, Roland is the Japanese manufacturer of electronic musical instruments, equipments and software. Uh, products include digital upright pianos, synths, product, uh, guitar products, keyboards, amps, there's like a whole load oh, yeah. of different... Um, it goes, yeah, it goes, goes on and on. Yeah, yeah. we've just uh, got involved with V-Moda as well, so now we are V-Moda headphones. Okay, and wow. nice, so, lovely. And um, yeah. for all the mu- listeners out there who are musicians and don't know who Roland is, I, th- I mean, you have to be living under a rock to not know the brand. Well, we would never like to say that ourselves. <laughs> yeah. That would come across very arrogant. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, I, you know, we're, we're lucky in that we're, uh, we're, we're one of the leading... Um, you know, digital instrument manufacturers, and we've got uh, a really great past, mm. um, which I think is one of the reasons why uh, we're so well known today. Yeah. Um, because you know that is influenced, obviously, the products that we continue to make. So, mm. yeah, absolutely, sweet, brilliant. And so, uh, as I said, you are the artist relations manager. Um, when I first read that title. I had no idea what it meant, especially for um, a manufacturer's company. Yeah. I was so I was confused. I was like, "Hold on, so they're like A and R's? They they sign artists? Do they? No, do they I mean, build these relationships? yeah, artist relations is um, I'm basically the link between Roland um, um, and Boss and Vmoda and mm-hmm. all that other jazz um, as as brands and. Uh, and, and the link with the artist, um, be it an independent artist who's brand new or your A-list artist, I'm the person who will go and speak to their management, will go and speak to them, will be the person to show them the equipment, show them how it works, and and then try and, you know, build a relationship because ultimately that's, that's what I'm here for. I'm mm. here to build a relationship. Yeah, and when you build that relationship, is it is it a case that you, you, you are you scouting first? Sometimes, yeah, yeah. It's it's a real mix. It's fifty fifty to artists that we go out and try and get to yeah. artists that contact us. I mean, we, um, yeah. I mean, I'm getting, I'm getting up to sort of ten to twenty emails a day of people trying to get a endorsement from mm. us, um, and that's a great thing. You know, it speaks yeah, volumes, and uh, and that's just in the. In the, in the European side of things, um, obviously in the States and in Japan and in Australia, they uh, they have similar numbers, if not more, too. So, mm. yeah, it's a great thing. Um, but, yeah, it's 50-50. Nice. I mean, I'm obsessed with music, always have been. So I really love being active and trying to go out there and, and get the bands that I think are good. Yeah. And that I think other people will think are good. Nice. And it's not just bands, is it? It's also like solo artists as well. Absolutely, yes. Yeah. Solo artists, um, DJs, yeah. now that we're back in that world. Um, and, you know, now that we look after our headphones, uh, it, it doesn't have to be anyone who plays instruments as well. So, mm, nice. um, But ultimately, yeah, musicians. I've always um, wondered with uh, endorsements, when an artist approaches a company as like Roland or, some, or another big company like that, do you somehow quantify the relationship and go, okay, if we if we uh, if we give them endorsement, if we give them the products, how much will will it benefit us? Yes, I mean, there's different ways of there's different endorsements. Ultimately, it's the beginning of a relationship, so I'll want to meet with these people. I'll I'll want to uh, hear their music. I'll mm. want to see their videos. Uh, get to know them as people as well, because some people might not be great with you know talking and so you know you might want to just do a session and maybe that's what they'll they'll prefer yeah so it's about getting to know them getting to know what their needs are like what 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 do they need help with mm. because ultimately that's my job I'm here to help them mm. I'm here to help them in their careers as much as I possibly can um, and everyone's got problems yeah um, into and how do we fix them you know is it that you haven't got enough money to to get the gear you need on tour mm. Uh, is it that you need help with loading your samples into your SPDSX drum mm-hmm. sample pad? Is it that you need advice because you're traveling to America and you want to loan a jazz chorus amp and I can help you do that? Yeah. So ultimately, that's what I do behind mm-hmm. the scenes. And 
no one really sees that apart from me and the band. You know, we don't shout about that. That just that's part of the package. That's what I'm here for. Nice. And then, you know, and then hopefully you can build a nice relationship where where it's a it's a pleasure for both people to do content or, um, you know, any any kind of uh, social media or interviews or mm. sessions or campaigns. You know, competitions. Um, there's there's a whole host of ways that we can talk about our relationship with an artist or a band and um but ultimately there has to be that kind of respect for each other first and that trust yeah, yeah. and you said that there was a, a 50 50 of people coming to you and you coming to yeah. going to artists so let's talk about the side of where you approach artists when you're um, looking at a certain band or a certain solo artist or a musician, do you have a particular criteria? Are you looking for something? Is it the statistics on their social media or their talent or their their potential? Um, it's a mix. Mm. I, As I say, because I've got this obsession with music, <laughs> I'll, I'll, I could be listening to a weird radio station that... Um, you know, doesn't have that many listeners and, and I could be hearing a band that I love and I'll often before the end of a track that I really love I'll have already emailed the manager <laughs> or I'll already have emailed the band wow um so yeah I think that I'll ultimately you know and there's dozens of people who um you know that you can't get hold of for, yeah. for some reason or another or that they might not want to work with you and that's fine um but if if I hear a track on the radio that I love or um, someone, one of my friends sends me a, 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 tr a track and says, you need to check these guys out. Then I'll, I'll, I'll want to meet them. You know, I'll, I'll send them an email and say, and I won't even look at the stats. Okay. You know, ultimately that's what it comes down to for me. It's, it's, it's the song mm. just as, just as somebody from a record label would probably say the same thing. Mm. If you have that, everything else will follow. Yeah. If you happen to be a nice band as well, and you happen to be up for having a relationship with a brand, then great, you mm. know, and then that's brilliant, you know, but best. ultimately you have to approach a load of bands yeah. and a load of bands have to approach me for yeah. only a handful to be really worthwhile. Yeah, yeah. So, um, like you were saying, it's all about the song, like the product that they put out. Yeah. So is it the same for when artists come to you? Um, is it that they give you their songs? Say, hey, look, this is this is what I'm about. I'm not going to lie; it's good to yeah. know the stats as well. If sure. they ha if they have an engaged following, it's a no brainer that that's a good thing for us. Mm -hmm. Ultimately, my job is to sell products for a, for a musical instrument company, yeah. right? You know, we've got to be honest about it. That's yeah, that's yeah. ultimately what I'm here for. Mm. However, you know, you need the songs and you need the passion and you need the drive and the ambition and the creativity. Mm. If you don't have that, then that's it. Yeah, you know what are you doing? Yeah, yeah of <laughs> what course. am I doing? Yeah, yeah. So ultimately, yes, it's it's good to have those numbers. But then if you're a brand new baby band and you've just released one track, I don't care if you haven't got a Facebook page and a manager mm. and a record label. That doesn't matter to me. Mm. And what what those you and if you want those, that doesn't matter to me. Mm. Ultimately, if you're a really exciting person who is creating great music you'll get popular. Yeah. And it doesn't matter whether you're popular with 60 million fans on Facebook and YouTube and um, and whatever else. It's great if you've got that yeah. for obvious reasons. Yeah. But if you don't have that, we work with loads of bands that aren't signed. Yeah. We work with loads of artists that, that have minimal people on Facebook following them. But those minimal people are, are really passionate about music and they might be the ones who turn around and go and buy a piano that that person's yeah, using exactly. and they might be respected you know if you've got 900 fans on facebook they might be the most engaged um musicians mm. on facebook mm. you know i remember um when we were reaching out to other brands to work with i remember asking one of them saying why did you uh why did you actually decide to you know to connect with us because mm. i we were so we were such a tiny brand back yeah. then still are um, and and he said i saw potential and i saw that you were doing everything um like in a sense of excellence you mm. you just you were putting a lot of work in and there was a good sense of quality absolutely yeah. you got you're you're doing what you do yeah exactly. really well yeah you're really passionate about it yeah despite the numbers he's still it, does, it, it yeah. doesn't matter yeah you know i'm any, you know, if we reach three people from this 
and they checked out our website and mm. listened to the bands that we endorse and went and bought their records, I'd be chuffed. Yeah, exactly. That's it. Because he was also saying that... Uh, um, before he knew us, we uh, a friend of ours, a mutual friend of ours, introduced us to the brand. Yeah, and um, and because of he kept that relationship, he met us, and yeah. because of he met us, we brought um, exposure to for from our fan base as absolutely. well. Absolutely. So you yeah, never absolutely. know who you actually work with. Yeah, and you what don't you can know do. that, yeah. and I think that you should just have that kind of attitude. I like to have that attitude. Yeah, you know where it's it's you know. You, you get to meet new people and have a chat about what you do, it, it, you know, and if you reach some people off the back of that, which, you know, let's let's be honest, this will. Yeah. Because you guys are great. And oh, I'm you. sure that, um, you know, it will try and help um, some, some people, again, answer their problems and yeah. try and help them out a little bit. And we all started somewhere. Yeah, um, exactly. You know, and, and we're still continuing. So, yeah. It all comes down to just relationships, right? That's just it. having a one-on-one relationship with a person yeah, and then connecting exactly. with um, other people as well. Yeah, it sounds cheesy, but it, everything we do comes down to that. Yeah. It's the relationships with the bands and the artists that we work with. It's the relationship we have with our head office in Japan. And then it's the relationship we have with people who aren't following us, mm. you know, that we're trying to get to to follow us and, and see what we do and maybe one day they'll try a, one of our products and then maybe they'll try another one and maybe they'll tell their mum that that piano that they've got is really good and maybe yeah, exactly. it'll be good for them yeah that's it yeah it's really simple sweet um so I, I know we've talked about how your your role as an artist relations manager um but i want to talk more about yourself mm. this is actually not on my notes cool. no <laughs> how did you actually um get into this role because i want to when i was doing research on you i think i saw like articles of like you dating back to all the way down to 2012 am i right in saying yeah you've been there for a while yeah i've been at roland for about eight years now okay Um, wow it started off i was a consultant um working with roland uk now Mm -hmm. i'm roland europe um, Mm -hmm. and have been for the last few years um so you were consulting on yeah so i was doing artist relations but it was um it eight years ago i mean you know I don't think we had a YouTube channel. Mm-hmm. I don't think we had a Facebook page. I don't think there you was YouTube. I mean? Exactly, <laughs> right? Then, so yeah. it's it's kind of crazy looking back. I mean, when I first... So I used to work for a production company and I was doing little bits of tour managing here and there, mm. um, tour production. Um, but I'd seen artist relations. Mm-hmm. I'd worked for Fender Guitars and I saw somebody doing artist relations there and mm. I thought that's the best job in the world. How can how can I do that? I asked if, you know, I could help them. And, and so I got to start, you know, I was meeting bands and managers and I, I didn't know how that worked. I didn't mm. know what was behind putting a gig on. Yeah. Everyone um, just sees the glamour of the gig. You see the gig. You don't yeah. see anything that happens backstage or, yeah. or the building up of that or the promotion of it or Yeah, the whatever. campaigns and all of that stuff. It's insane. Yeah. And so I think that that really intrigued me to start with. And I was lucky enough to be working with people that were just introducing me to everyone, mm. you know. Um, so I got to meet a lot of people very quickly. And Was that because you got yourself out there? You were just asking people, hey, can I help you? Yeah. Was, I'm, were you I'm just lucky of, to know people? Yeah, I'm... Uh, I'm pretty tenacious. Okay. Um, and you know, I'm. I, I want to know. I want to know everything about <laughs> about about bits and pieces that I'm into. Mm-hmm. You know. Um, so I wanted to know. Yeah. What What does a manager do? I want to know what a record label does. What does the A and R guy for a record label do? Mm. That lighting guy. What 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 does he do during the? I want to know all these things. Partly because I was trying to work out what I wanted to do. Yeah. You know yeah, what I mean? Sure. Um, when I was at school i i wasn't given a given a choice yeah i told them that i like music and they they were trying to get me to work in the local bank because that was a career you know <laughs> yeah yeah um so when i look now at what my nephew is doing at school like you know music production and yeah, yeah. he's in like five bands and i'm just like <laughs> yeah it's great if i had those opportunities i you know? know right yeah um but i'm not complaining but you know i think that you know back back in that day you did have to be more kind of tenacious you had to kind of get out there mm. um and that's what i wanted to do you know i wanted to kind of see how it all worked and Ultimately, I approached Roland and said, you know, I could do your artist relations for you. Here's my oh, plan, brilliant, you know, because yeah. I knew that we had to work with bands more closely than just getting them to hold up a cheesy photo of them yeah, holding, of a, holding a guitar pedal or whatever. Um, 
it doesn't mean anything. Yeah. Um, I knew I, we had to start doing videos. I knew we had to be more engaging and, but, but then, you know, I didn't know much myself then. I just knew it had to change. Sure. And, um, and we, we're lucky enough to have a really great marketing team. Uh, so I'm, I'm part of that. Mm. Um, and we're still learning ourselves, you know, we don't get everything right all the time, but what's really great is that we're looking to get things right. Yeah. You know what I mean? So yeah, we're, yeah. we're really happy with evolving with the music industry. Yeah. Um, and with trends and, uh, and trying to do stuff that people haven't done, mm. you know, can you elaborate um, on that? Do well, you, what, what kind of things? You know, have... I mean, you know, it's, it's all very well being a musical instruments brand and, and we will always want to do interviews with bands. We will always want them to do a little rig rundown or sure. though we're not allowed to call it rig rundown. <laughs> that's owned by premier guitars. Anyway, it's another <laughs> story. Um, you know, and we'll always want to do sessions and stuff like that, but, but, but taking things and doing them slightly differently, like doing competitions to win guitar lessons sure. from people that we endorse so that we know the email addresses we're getting are from of guitarists yeah. rather than when we first started it, when we did a competition to try and get numbers data yeah it might be win a pair of glastonbury vip tickets and whilst that's very nice and you're going to get a shed load of email addresses and data off the back of that how many of them people might f the following week exactly. go out and buy a guitar pedal yeah it's the integrity of that email yeah. list isn't it yeah because so it's it's trying to look at things slightly outside the box i mean ultimately and that's what we want artists to to strive for as well mm. you know yes we will work with the big artists that maybe people see as, um, you know, not the most uh, kind of forward-thinking um, bands. Mm. But personally, I think it's really important to start working with people who might not have that many views uh, on their YouTube channel or, yeah. or, or, or people following them on Facebook. But if they're doing something different mm. with passion that no one else is doing or done, then it's great. And we want to be part of that and we should be part of that. That's mm. part of my, I think that's part of my responsibility Yeah, is to, is to push these bands as much as I can, you know? Nice. Um, um yeah. you, uh, briefly talked about the evolution of music and, uh, and how it's evolving. Can you, I've always wanted to get people's thoughts on that because, because of what the way technology is now and mm. how it's moving so fast and how, um, like YouTube wasn't around f f 10 years ago. Yeah. Uh, Spotify wasn't around five years ago, but where do you think the music industry is going and, and for the independent artist, how, how is it helping them or not helping them with their careers? Well, I mean, you know, there's been obviously a lot of debate on Spotify and is it mm. helping people? You know, there's two ways you can go. You know, are people going out there and buying as much music? No. But are more people listening to that band yeah, that exactly. went off? Yeah. Yes. Um, you know, a lot of bands are, are making their money these days through through the live circuit. Mm. Um, you know, and, and other ways of making money in this industry, i.e. working with brands, you know. Um, and and that's, that's a good thing. I think ultimately, as long as, you know as long as you're doing things because you want to do them, hmm. you know, I don't think that you should do a partnership with a brand because y you know, you want to get paid and that's why you're doing it. Yeah. yeah. I'm sure it's great that it can fund your tour. Yeah. But if you're working with a headphone company, then you should be passionate about those headphones yeah. legitimately. Yeah. You know, <laughs> I think that's what it comes down to is there are new ways to make money now, um, hmm. but just be careful you know, people are savvy enough on the internet that they, that they know this. Yeah. I think that you just have to, you know, we want to work with people that love Roland and mm -hmm. that love Boss and that love Vmoda. Um, you know, because I get emails sometimes where it's like, hey, Jamie, I'd like an endorsement. I've just spoken to Yamaha and they're offering me three keyboards. Can you match that? And I'm like, go to Yamaha. <laughs> yeah. Go to Yamaha. <laughs> what is this? It's like why, a negotiation. Why are, you talking, why are you talking to me? Like, <laughs> yeah. what an introduction. I'm actually... Unbelievable. Is that, is that for real? You actually have got, yeah, I got get, emails I, like I've, that? Yeah, I, I get them more often than you think. Wow. And, um, and it always baffles me, mm. you know, that, that some people still view us as just this company that are just going to give out keyboards and it yeah. doesn't matter what you think about them. It's just about getting them out there. Yeah. It's completely the opposite. Yeah. You know? Wow, that's so interesting. Mm. Now, you know what? That kind of uh, segues me into this. my next question. Yeah. Is, um, if, an, if a person, uh, an independent artist, anyone who wants to approach a brand like yourself, like Roland, um, what advice can you give to them? And like, and, you know, so what... What should they not do firstly? Uh, 
don't make the email too long. <laughs> okay. Um, I get. Don't many. talk about three Yamaha keyboards. Don't yeah. talk. Don't do that. Um, yeah, that would be a bad start. So, what um, constitutes as a long email? Um, I think ultimately, an introduction um, email should just have links to whatever you've you've done. Mm. If you've got a Facebook page, great. If you've got a YouTube channel that I can check out some of your music, great. Um, if there's something specific that you've just done and you want to show me, great, send me that link. E- everything's online these days. Yeah, you don't true. have to tell me in 10 paragraphs about that track or the reason behind it. We can yeah. get into that if yeah. need be. Um, a short, concise email. You know, think of it like a CV for your employer. Mm. The ones that are 10 pages long, forget about it. Mm. No one's got that time. Yeah. Um, so the ones that are really short, hey, um, you know, we, re- we really like these products. Um, maybe a little bit of background of them and and what they're doing now, what their plans are for the future, and just some links to where I can check them out. That's it. Nice. Um, you know, it's nice when people do have passion, and I appreciate when people go at length to talk about themselves. But the first initial email shouldn't shouldn't be that. Yeah. You know, um, and I like people who who kind of go out their way and, and do think about things differently. We do get a lot of emails like that, but, um, you know, it's nice to get things in the post once in a while. You know, oh, cool. if you, if you, I remember getting a CD from someone who said that they wanted to work with us and, and here's, here's some tracks, but they also gave me a mix CD and said, these are the people I'm into. Oh, well, let me know what you think. That's really and, cool. and I was like, that's, that's wicked. When was this? Cause CDs is dead now. So this was, was a while ago, man. Yeah. But, uh, <laughs> But I like that. And actually, you know, that same person said that they'd been around that day physically going to radio stations, meeting the DJs that they like mm. and giving them a mix CD and just saying, hey, here's my band. But, you know, here's some other tracks, too. And mm. That's um, very you know, clever. have you talked about this? Have you thought about this band? And I just thought, yeah. You yeah. Know, it's going above and beyond and not just thinking about it's yourself. Above and, it's above and beyond. And ultimately, you know, Roland as a brand want to want to kind of do that too. Mm. We're not there just to shove musical products in your face and mm. say buy these and and you know have bands kind of juggle with boss pedals. It's not what we're about. We want to. We're a lifestyle brand too. You know we want to tell you how to build a pedal board. Yeah. You know we want to tell mums and dads about a drum kit that. How, how can you set up a drum kit in in your child's bedroom so that it doesn't make much noise? Yeah. How can you make money from the music industry today? Yeah. Um, what's our advice with going to get management or, or trying to get on a festival circuit? How, if you're trying to get a support from a main, main act, how do you do that? We interview people if we don't know, mm. and we put that up on our website because we want to ultimately help us. Yeah. If people trust us in the industry as a leading voice in, in, in anything, mm. then ultimately they're going to be more likely to, you know, have trust in us and ultimately yeah. that's what that's what is i guess the most important thing that people trust that we're not just trying to sell them stuff yeah yeah you know? of course it's giving that free resource so that they yeah. have that initial um that initial contact with the with the brand and absolutely. build that relationship like you were talking about absolutely and then they go oh if you look at the best brands in the world yeah they're the people who will be um They're the people who will be passionate in telling you about other stuff and how can they help you and and opening up a discussion, you know, like you just said, how do you make money from the music industry these days? If you're a new band, if you're not Coldplay or Adele, yeah. How do you make money from that? Well, let's yeah. have a chat about it. Yeah, exactly. Like, if we don't know, which we hold up our hands too often, yeah. we'll find someone who's an expert and we'll ask them, mm. you know, and then we'll put that up on our website and we'll get them to share it. Um, and you can find all of that on the, um, the, the art, is it a blog? Uh, we do have a blog, yeah, yeah, yeah Roland.com. Yeah, cool. we do have a, a, a blog up there, and um, we used to have a magazine called Power On. That's that's not oh, okay. that's not happening anymore. But we still try and do that stuff online. You yeah, know? yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, I think that there's there's too many people out there that are just. It's like if you look at Instagram, you know, not every photo has to have a product in it. Hmm. You know, yeah. if you're that brand, yeah. You know? It's 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 about having a voice and and being personal. Yeah, it's you know, true to to people who are your audience or who are your potential audience, which is obviously uh, a big thing. So yeah, sweet. I remember watching a video about when you were saying uh, uh, a manufacturer's company shouldn't just be their brands and all yeah. of that. Just a whole a whole history of just um, 
products, 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 mm. products. Uh, one of the reasons why I don't, this is so t- I don't know why I'm bringing her in, but Kim Kardashian is um, so uh, famous for and successful for what she does is that she's very personal, right? And she talks about her everyday stuff. She creates that connection, and then occasionally. She puts in her products in. I'll take your word for it. Yeah. I, don't, I don't follow her online, but um, no, I mean I watched the video. I'm not, I, I, I'm not a fan. <laughs> I can tell she's very successful. Yeah, um, yeah, no, absolutely. And you know, it's important. You don't um, want to just like just bash the the customer, the consumer with no. what you do. No, and yeah. I like I I genuinely like reading the comments from people who are into the same kind of stuff as us. Yeah, yeah. and even when they're not, I mean that's that's the even better thing. You know, like I I'll, I'll put up a a quote online just saying just listening to Deftones, White Pony, what, what are you listening to? Mm. And just seeing what, what people are checking out, you know, what, what can we listen to? Nice. You know? Do you um, have a, can you mention any artists that uh, you're currently, that you have a relationship with and that you've taken on board with Roland? Yeah, sure. I mean, it's, it's always hard when people ask you that because mm-hmm. we look after so many artists in, sure. in different capacities. Um. But, you know, new artists excite me. I mean, we, we, we've got an, a band coming to the Artist Centre in London next week called The MVPs and the spelled T-H-E-E MVPs. T-H-E-E. Okay. Uh, and, um, you know, they're, they're a new band. Um, Three-piece? Four-piece? From piece? the UK. I actually don't know. I think they're a four-piece. Okay. Um, but they make some fantastic noise. And I can't <laughs> wait to... I can't wait to see them live because I haven't seen them live yet. I think they're supporting Pulled Apart by Horses at the okay. moment. And, yeah, so I, I should be meeting them tomorrow, Sweet. I think. Sweet, I'll check them out. Yeah, I'll yeah, so see. check them out. But, you know, we deal with everyone, you know, on the guitar side. We've got uh, Johnny Marr from The Smiths, um, Bring Me the Horizon. Uh, God, I could go on and on. Yeah, yeah, But, yeah. Um, you know, we're lucky enough to work with some really big bands. Um, like I say, people like Muse, um, Right down to people who are brand new. Yeah. Like, um, there's a guy called Anchor Song who came into the studio last week. He's from Japan, lives in London. Um, and he's uh, he released an album last year called Ceremonial. Check it out. Okay. It's really amazing. Definitely will. Yeah. And you said you have your own studios then, is it? In your uh, we have an artist relations room in uh, Berlin okay. and in London and in LA and in Tokyo. Sweet. Um, and so artists who are traveling can go to those centers um check out the latest gear have a chat about what we want to do together in the future Mm. i mean we do um we're also involved in you know songwriting camps um and so we want we want to help our artists you know we want to help them create um and so we don't want it to be just because we've released a drum machine that that's our job done we want to show you how that works we want to get this guy in to show you how he produced public enemy yeah you know what i mean yeah yeah. um and what did he do on the 808 drum machine that they can follow yeah you know what i mean um that's cool so we're yeah we're always kind of looking to, to to reach out to those people yeah nice so um if an artist wanted to come not even just an artist if a person wanted to come and uh, reach roland um how do they get in contact is it through the website through social media yeah i mean you know they can do that too um i think on our website there's um links to how they can get an endorsement there's a specific email address sure um i believe it's artists at roland.com Cool. Don't quote me on that. I will, <laughs> right, no I will let you know. Yeah, no worries. Um, well, hopefully we'll do a write-up and we'll put it on ab- our blog. Absolutely. And, and, get the and you know, there's, there's addresses for head office. I mean, ultimately, you know, they can get in contact with us in, in, in numerous ways. But but getting in touch with the brand, sending that short email, mm. and um, ultimately... With those links. With those links, yeah. you know. And ultimately, if, if you've got... Um, if you're a creative person... And you're making some good stuff and you want to continue to make good stuff and work with a musical company like ours, then you'll, you'll be on to a winner. Yeah. yeah. Um, so is it you what reading every single email, all 20 emails a day? Uh, well, I mean, I, get, I, I personally get those emails. I mean, you know, it would be more than that if you take into consideration what head office get. Yeah, exactly. I sometimes get yeah, emails sent, sent from them saying, you know, Jamie, what do you think? And that's the way it should happen <laughs> yeah. um, but somehow pe- they just get well, your email people know people i get a lot of emails from artists who sure. are mates with other artists that we endorse and often sure. that's a, that's a way in um but i'm happy to read those ones yeah yeah, yeah. you know well hopefully um, after this you'll get another five more yeah yeah exactly <laughs> give you more yeah. of a headache too. fresh week you know and that's what i love you know i love i love those emails more than anything oh, you know cool. there are a lot of them and i'm busy and that's great mm. it's a good problem to have mm. um but 
I I love nothing more than a new band who I I have no idea about sending me their music, telling me about what they're all about, what their plans are for the future, um, what gear they play, what they what they're interested in using, what advice do I have for them, and, and then a link to to music, you know. Ultimately, it comes down to that. Nice. And when I'm hearing a new track by a band that I've never heard of and it blows me away, which it often does, it's the best feeling in the world. Nice. Yeah. Well, Rolling is, like I said in at the beginning of the podcast, that it's just such a big brand. And if you don't know what it is, uh, you're living under get a rock. Get to know. Yeah, get to know. Because <laughs> I, when I was starting out, I mean, I was like a hobbyist guitarist. Uh-huh. And I, I saw all the Boss um, pedals. And I was like, oh, my gosh, I have to get this, I have to get this, I have to get this. And it was just great products. And, and Roland, has, I've just known it all my life just mm. because being surrounded in the music world, I've just seen a brand everywhere yeah so it's great to see the success of roland and it's great to have yourself come down and talk about Thank roland you. and represent roland yeah it's great to it's great to be here yeah we're really lucky that we've got that history um where uh, and, and occasionally it was by accident mm. like with the 808 drum machine and the 909 drum machine mm. for instance you know that went, went on to create a genre of music yeah. and we built that to be an accompaniment to a to an organ player <laughs> you know what i mean yeah and then africa bambata made planet rock um and the rest is history you know so um we're respectful of that Mm. and um and we're 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 lucky that we have some incredible people in japan um who uh who drive the company and make these fantastic products that uh are just you know they're not copying anyone yeah They're, they're they're completely innovative and i think that's something that they will continue to do and you know it's really exciting to to be able to be a part of that nice well um my final question is a question that i've asked all the people we've interviewed yeah. and it is what in your eyes is, is is a successful artist right good question um anyone that can wake up in the morning and go and create um with the vision of not copying anything anyone's done lovely and completely adhere to that vision Hmm. you know uh yeah that's my definition that's a great great definition jamie franklin uh thank you for coming thanks for having me good to meet you thank you cheers